Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to look at the VOT Max data that your watch is probably telling you and why you should pretty much ignore it. So VOT Max is the amount of oxygen that the body can use per minute essentially. Um, realistically, the watch can't tell you that. So you remember the old Lucas there about years ago, there's a guy running on a treadmill, he had a big mask on and what you wouldn't have seen on screen but it would have been a bag basically measuring the gas exchange. That's how you measure VOT max. You don't measure it by your heart rate. Now there are some correlations, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, if you're if you're able to push your high your heart rate higher for longer, you are likely to have a higher much higher VOT max. But it isn't the only thing that matters, especially when it comes to things like a marathon. Now it will come with a race predictor on your watch uh, if you're wearing a certain brand, uh, which I'm just being really careful with there, uh, mentioning too much in depth. Um, but it will basically tell you your race predictions for say 5k, 10k, half marathon, and marathon. Now those are based off of your VOT max, not on your recent performances and actually your runs. So from a heart rate data, it's assuming your lactate threshold and assuming your VOT max, which again it can't do um, because lactate can only be measured by uh, finger prick test by blood, uh, blood measurements during a particular testing method essentially you can use. So when it's telling you these are your numbers, it's making assumptions and it's then making those assumptions into your race predictions. Now some of these aren't necessarily too far off, but often there'll be one or two distances that are fairly close and the other two will be completely wrong. So for me, 5k and 10k is saying way quicker than I can run, um, than I've ever run. Um, and it often is saying that even when I'm not in a speed work block, when it then comes to half marathon marathon often it's far slower than i would hope to run at that time uh, the half marathon by maybe a minute or so and the marathon by four to seven minutes uh, quite often so you can't really rely on them now even if you could accurately measure those things by your watch and it could tell you you know fairly closely where those numbers are it doesn't always reflect in your training because ultimately mine hasn't changed in about two years mine says 66 all the time i had it tested a few years back via the correct methods and it was 64 and I was at the time running probably about 90 minute 5k, something about 18, 19 minutes. Now running under 16 minutes, it's still only saying it's 66, which it should have gone up by quite a bit more than that. So realistically, again, you can't rely on that. But the other side of that, even if it was accurate, more importantly, especially for a marathon, is the percentage of your VO2 max that you can run at marathon pace and how long you can hold that pace for. So that then comes down to your lactate threshold, lactate turn point. That often leads into your fueling and how you use different part, you know, how you use your um, your fueling systems or how they work efficiently or not efficiently for you as well. So essentially, the watch can't know your VOT max. It can't know your uh, your lactate threshold as it says it does, even when you're using a heart rate monitor. Um, so at that point, just ignore it. Um, the race predictors, everything is off of flawed data and flawed assumptions. There are some correlations. Don't get me wrong but they aren't accurate enough to give you a really good estimation. So it's basically a feature for feature's sake, not a feature to actually help you train better and more intelligently. There are ways to get VOT max tested. So if you are interested, there are some locations uh, which can do this. I've looked into this and I would definitely consider it and I am considering it in the near future. And um, when I did it a few years back, I had it done at Eastern College, uh, assisting a colleague of mine at the time uh, with their, their foundation degree, uh, or basically their test subject. Really horrible thing to do, but really good uh, at the same time. You know, if you like punishing yourself, then VO2 max testing is interesting. Um, put it that way. But no, I think there are there are some really good places. Um, off the top of my head, I think it's a place called Go Perform, um, down in Westminster, and there's the Anglia Ruskin University does a, a version of this as well. So I'm looking at this over the next few months and probably gonna have this tested uh, in the middle of this year uh, because it is quite interesting, and you can then start to plan some of your runs off the back of this and, and look at what you'd expect to see happen. But until you do something like that, there's no way of knowing. And it's quite an expensive way to do things. So unless you're incredibly serious about your training and 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 or have a lot of money to burn, it's not worth doing. Train hard, listen to your races, use race predictors like the Regals formula uh, or the um, the Jack Daniels formula or the McMillan formula. Basically then work out what your training paces should be for target races and then go from there. You're going to just get great results still either way and you haven't got to spend loads of money or just watch this telling you the wrong information, telling you you're unproductive uh, or that you are maintaining when actually you're working your backside up and seeing great fitness gains. So the watches are great, but sometimes features are not what they cracked up to be. So don't worry about the VO2 max data. It doesn't really matter that much anyway in our context a lot of the time. So train hard, train intelligently, use other stats and data to really show what you need to do. See you soon.